deadly storm plows through the state, making landfall with wind gusts topping 140 miles an hour. Blinding rain, dumping more than a foot of water. The devastating storm leaves a trail of destruction coast to coast across Florida. It's just total devastation. The Keys battle a direct hit, boats tossed onto roads, parts of Miami underwater, streets turned to rushing rivers. Construction cranes dangling off the tops of buildings and tornadoes tearing through. Millions across the state losing power, searching for clean water, and the incredible rescues overnight. Survivors of this terrifying storm now speaking out on GMA. And this morning, the new path of Irma, Atlanta in its path. The entire state of Georgia now in a state of emergency. David Muir, Amy Robach, and our ABC News team spread out across the storm zone. A special edition of GMA starts now. This is a special edition of Good Morning America. Hurricane Irma, Monster Storm. And good morning, America. Florida has never seen a storm like this. That is Naples. That is drone footage of Naples, the destruction in Naples yesterday. Right now, the storm hitting Jacksonville. They're expecting a powerful storm surge there. And on one point on Sunday, the entire state of Florida was covered by this storm. Such a massive force. Now it's making its way toward Atlanta, where they're facing a tropical storm warning. And we are now just starting to see images from the area's hardest hit, that being the Florida Keys. Yeah, it hit there first, it hit there hard. Here's what we know right now. Hurricane Irma has claimed at least five lives in Florida, 27 across the Caribbean. It was a Category 4 storm when it first made landfall in Florida. That was shortly after 9 a.m. yesterday, with wind gusts topping 140 miles an hour. This morning, more than 5 million customers without power in the state. World News Tonight anchor David Muir is leading our coverage on the ground. He's been there throughout the storm. And our Amy Robach is there as well. She's heading to the devastated Florida Keys this morning. Our team is spread across the storm zone. Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z tracking the hurricane from the very beginning. She starts us off with the latest on its path. Good morning, Ginger. Good morning, George. The impacts of this storm still being felt for 415 miles. That's how far the tropical storm force winds go. And this morning, Jacksonville is under a flash flood emergency. Six to even 12 inches of rain has fallen. They had a record storm surge in Jacksonville this morning, but those flash flood warnings go up into Brunswick, Georgia and other parts of Florida. You want to take that track and see where it's going to go next. Well, it's going to move through Georgia and then eventually into Alabama as a tropical storm still and then will just be a depression. Either way, you still have gusty winds, extremely heavy rains in places. And remember, these are places and times that it's going to be tough on a Monday morning heading into Atlanta through the afternoon and then finally dying out as it goes into Tennessee. But look at some of those numbers you can see more than eight inches on top of what's already fallen. I'm going to give you an idea of what happened, what's going to happen, many more of those impacts in just moments. Robin and George. All right, Ginger and Hurricane Irma now heading north. It is hitting Tallahassee right now and ABC Steve with Insomni is there on the ground for us. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Robin. As you can see, I'm soaking wet. The rain is coming down right now. The wind gusts have been a real problem here. I want you to take a look. You can see these trees are blowing and we're not even during one of the highest wind gusts. The big concern for people who live here in Tallahassee is, of course, they're afraid they're going to join the millions across the state who are without power as these branches fall. There are many people who, who came here from South Florida hoping to escape this storm who are now dealing with this now but the big problem as ginger mentioned is happening right now this morning in jacksonville florida because of that storm surge and the high the high heavy rains uh, they're dealing with a water emergency police are having to rescue families from flooded apartment buildings and other buildings that's going on right now also overnight we have some really really incredible pictures from orlando and lakeland florida as the storm moved through those families are going to have to wake up this morning and look and see whether the pieces of their roofs are still there and of course as ginger also mentioned atlanta there is now a huge concern in atlanta schools are canceled i know the generator at my house is on the ready as people are are worried whether they're going to lose power because of all the trees in this wind knocking down tree branches over power lines robin all right steve -O, stay stay safe there reminder again of the massive scale of this storm you know hurricane irma first made landfall as we said in the florida keys kudjo key just after 9 a.m on sunday and it hit hard the emergency management director fears the destruction could cause a humanitarian crisis the entire area under mandatory evacuations, residents still barred from returning. And Amy Robach traveled through the night to get to nearby Florida City. Good morning, Amy. 
That's right, George. Good morning to you. We got up very early. We drove for about an hour from Miami and we got to this point. Yes, near Florida City, where there is a police roadblock. No one who isn't on official business can get through past this point. This is the point of US-1 where it narrows into a two-lane highway surrounded by water. And so officials have to get in there, clear the debris from the road, assess the damage, and make sure those bridges, the many bridges that take you all the way to Key West, are sound and safe before they're going to allow res residents to return home. This morning, we are getting our first glimpse at the devastation in the Lower Keys after Irma stormed through with 130 mile per hour wind gusts. Boats on the roads. Cars buried under sand. Store windows blown out. Houses barely standing. Debris everywhere. Residents advised to boil drinking water. As Irma came roaring in, these two storm chasers tried to measure the wind speeds unable to hold their ground. Transformers igniting. Trying to drive from Miami to the Keys overnight, we got a first-hand look at the devastation Irma left behind. It's a tree down right there, wow. None of the streetlights are working. All the power's out. So everyone has to drive very carefully. Thankfully, there aren't many people on the road at 3 o'clock in the morning. In Key Largo, David K. choosing not to evacuate, documenting Irma as she moved in, watching his property engulfed from the storm surge. We're doing all right. We're surviving. This morning, the painful process of cleaning up. That's our sign. That's our uh, street. And remarkably, as you just saw there, the only insight we have into the actual damage in the Keys right now is from people who were able to still use social media or Skype or have some sort of connection because no officials have actually gotten in there until just now this morning. We saw a huge convoy of army trucks going in with supplies and equipment for the people who are there and certainly to clean up whatever needs to be cleaned up. And it, there, there is significant damage, as we can see. But in the meantime, a lot of residents are lining up trying to get in. The police are having to turn them away. Uh, it is certainly an unknown what's inside. We talked to a group of Monroe Fire Rescue, and they said they had no idea what they were going to find once they got in, Robin. The unknown. All right, Amy, but we do know that Hurricane Irma has already been so devastating. Let's go to World News Tonight anchor David Muir, who's leading our coverage on the ground. He has been throughout the storm. He's there in Naples, where they received the brunt of the hurricane on Sunday. And David, are you getting a sense of the damage there now? Yeah, at first light, Robin, as you knew would be the case. And take a look behind me here in Naples. You can see the extent of the damage from Hurricane Irma when this uh, massive storm moved through. In fact, the highest wind gust reported from the storm here in Naples, 142 miles per hour. You can see this apartment building. Most of these families likely evacuated during the storm, but they're going to come back to find that their cars are completely damaged. The state emergency chief this morning saying we cannot have the full extent of this damage until they're able to go out, but they warned everyone to stay inside after the storm. Take a look this drone video right out of Naples overnight and this gives you an idea of the water from the storm surge the mayor here was relieved it was not as as big as expected they were forecasting 10 to 15 feet but still it brought a lot of water into Naples you see those streets underwater this morning and take a look at what it was like as Hurricane Irma bared down on us right here coming right over where our location was 400-mile-wide storm moving up the coast of Florida, making a second landfall on Marco Island. Look at this. This is just incredible. The hurricane then moving slightly up the coast, hitting us here in Naples after 4 p.m., the hurricane hovering right above. We are blocked by two sort of concrete barriers, which is the only reason we're able to talk. It feels like you're being blasted with the fire hose. Now the rains are just coming in sideways here and the winds just continue to pick up. The highest wind gusts from Hurricane Irma here in Florida, 142 miles per hour. There's a giant vacuum sucking everything out. Naples residents rushing to shelters, this mother and daughter and granddaughter making it so just cute. in time. Pandemonium. We were very nervous, very scared. The shelter door cracking under the pressure. As the National Guard taped up the glass, people clearing the front doors, bracing for impact. They actually just cleared out this whole area. This room was packed with people, just in awe, watching the winds just pick up. For a time, our own team seeking shelter in a stairwell. Ooh. This is what happens when these buildings, and just be careful, Tom, 
The awnings on the outside, the outside of the building actually are crashing down, breaking these windows inside the hotel. But Hurricane Irma was not finished yet. Continuing on her northward path, Fort Myers next. Tom Yamas was there. Hurricane Irma is right over us right now, and I'm a little concerned about the projectiles, but at this hour, Fort Myers is getting absolutely ripped apart. At 11 p.m., the storm was then centered 50 miles southeast of Tampa. The mayor of that city said they were about to be tested. We have a densely populated area of some 3 million people who are now either need to be out of here or they need to be hunkered down. High wall of the storm containing the storm's ferocious and violent winds, then passing over Sarasota. For Sarasota, for Tampa Bay, the wind is blowing offshore with the current track, so the, the, there is no storm surge here yet. By the, then, hopefully, folks are uh, in shelter and away from the water. And this morning, Sarasota is still on high alert amid storm surge warnings up the coast. So many of these families have yet, obviously, to come home and see the damage left behind by this hurricane. But, Robin, I have to tell you, I remember being in the Superdome in Katrina as that storm barreled through the roof, uh, sort of ripping off as we were all inside. And I can only imagine what it was like for the thousands of Floridians who were inside these shelters all throughout the state. And particularly, keep in mind, that track shifted very quickly over the weekend. Many people had to uh, very hurriedly get out of their homes and get to the nearest shelter here, Robin. And, David, what was it like for you being in that high rise as those winds hit with such huge force? Well, it was really stunning to see. We were on the balcony protected, but the top of the roof began coming off, the, the tiles flying into the air, the debris shooting through. Uh, that's when the entire team went into that stairwell for a time. And, and as Ginger and Rob predicted, then the eye was over us, and there was suddenly this lull, this calm in the storm, sort of extraordinary, extraordinary to see this science overhead. And I should point out, Robin, nearly 6 million people here in Florida without power this mm. morning and likely waiting to come home to see the damage. Yeah, that number could grow. Okay, David, thank you. And Hurricane Irma also raced through Tampa, the first hurricane there in nearly a century. T.J. Holmes was there for it all. Good morning, T.J. Hey, good morning to you, Robin. So just how bad was it here in Tampa? Well, frankly, we don't know yet. The storm hit in the overnight hours. It was dark, and now the curfew is still in place. Emergency officials are getting out on the roads trying to assess just how bad the damage was uh, from the storm. What do we know? We know it wasn't as bad as it could have been. This area that's so vulnerable to flooding, and that was the huge fear. We know that the storm that surprised everybody by starting to make a beeline here over the weekend also made a little bit of a shift to the east. So it spared this area, Tampa, that huge, huge hit from a huge, huge storm. It was a Category 1, still a hurricane, but still the surge and that so much that they expected and feared did not come to fruition. One thing we can tell you, I'm standing next to the Hillsborough River, which dumped out into the bay. Well, this yesterday was essentially drained. It dumped out yesterday, as we often see, as the water gets sucked out and then the surge comes back. Well, that water, as you see here live with me, is back. So there's still a flooding fear possibility here. We're still getting wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles an hour and some driving rain. So they're not out of the woods just yet, Robin. Still reason to be concerned. All right, TJ, thank you. So Tampa spared a direct hit. Miami was also spared a direct hit from her, but the city still pounded by fierce winds that knocked down cranes and heavy rain that turned streets into rivers. Gio Benitez was there for all of it. He joins us now. Good morning, Gio. George, good morning to you. There is so much destruction here in South Florida. I want you to take a look at this because this might look like a park. This is actually a city street here in downtown Miami. There's the bike lane, and we're seeing so many dangers right here. You have this giant branch just dangling there. You have downed power lines, glass everywhere. Irma was just a beast. This morning, Miami waking up battered and soaked to the bone. Things have gone from bad to worse. We keep waiting for the winds to die down, and they just continue to pick up. It actually looks, and I'm not exaggerating here, apocalyptic behind me. Completely uprooting trees. Just pulled straight out of the ground here. Watch the ferocious wind rip the roof off this apartment building. The torrential downpour flooding downtown, swallowing street signs. This hotel swamped the city's financial district entirely underwater. I had a front row seat as Irma unleashed its wrath on this city. I just want to reassure some people, I am roped down. I've never seen anything like this covering storms here. We feared, whoa, we feared these winds are really intense here. We're seeing branches, pieces of trees come from the sky. Obviously, trees aren't up there, which means that a lot of these trees are sort of whipping around and coming around like that. 
Look at this. You can see this whiteout thing, this whiteout condition. The winds almost proved too much for our hotel's shatter resistant windows. It looks like windows have started to pop open. We are also getting reports now of some cranes in danger of collapsing. It's crazy. Three of those massive construction cranes ended up collapsing. And so we heard before the storm even hit, people were talking about how it just felt different. Well, when it hit, it absolutely was different. It was just so big that we were constantly just hammered by all of that wind, all of that rain. It was just relentless, George. Yeah, we could see it all day long, Jay. You were lashed to that balcony. But one of the things we also saw, Miami made so many changes after Hurricane Andrew back in 1992, and those appear to have made a difference. Oh, absolutely. And that's why our windows didn't completely shatter, George. They cracked, but they didn't shatter through because they were impact resistant. They were hurricane resistant. So that's the good news, George. Okay, Gio Benitez, thanks very much. And George, as we know, Hurricane Irma is also creating a travel nightmare. More than 13,000 flights have been canceled since Irma first barreled into the Caribbean. ABC's Alex Perez is there in Atlanta where they are bracing for the storm. Good morning, Alex. Yeah, that's all right. Good morning, Robin. A state of emergency declared here in Georgia. This is the world's busiest airport, and they are bracing for some major, major problems as Irma makes its way into Georgia and right here into Atlanta. Now, today alone, already some 2,700 flights have been grounded because of the storm. And as you mentioned, since it started, the hurricane has canceled some 13,000 flights. Now, the big concern here, those powerful, damaging winds uh, that could make landing or taking off very very, very dangerous. This is a huge hub for Delta here, and Delta Airlines has spent the weekend telling all of its passengers that they should try to make other plans, try to connect at a different hub when possible. Officials have been doing everything they can to try to get ahead of the storm here, but as we've seen in Florida, it's not easy. Robin? Okay, Alex, thank you. Okay, we're going to go back to Ginger right now. More on Irma. A lot of warnings for the southeast this morning, Ginger. And this morning, Jacksonville, there are water rescues happening right now. A flash flood emergency in place there. They are still in that hurricane warning, as is everyone in the hot pink. Tropical storm warning in Atlanta, as Alex was just talking about those winds, but the high wind warning, that's for almost 60 mile per hour gusts that could happen in parts of South Carolina. Nashville, even with a wind advisory, you could see gusts there to 45. So what time does this all go down? It's happening now in North Florida and Southern Georgia, parts of South Carolina. Look at Savannah at 58. And then look at here, Atlanta, 51 mile per hour gust this afternoon and evening. 34 still Albany there. Birmingham will go to 25 and then we'll keep moving this north. It'll keep weakening. So we're going to have a lot more on what to expect as it moves north. And we're going to look back at why the Everglades may have paid a little bit of a, 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 a little bit of a variable into why this thing died out and weakened just coming up in a bit. But for now, we've got to get to your local weather. All of that select cities brought to you by CarMax. At CarMax, we buy all the cars. Uh, all the cars? All the cars. Old cars? Yes. New cars? Oh, yeah. Sports cars? Indeed. A big old boat-like car? Permission to come aboard. What about a car that's all... <laughs> I don't see why not. What about, let's say, oh, I don't know, a purple van with a painting of a wizard just shooting lightning out of his fingers, riding a unicorn, sneezing rainbows? Definitely. I'm just asking for a friend. Yeah, I figured. A cool start, but a warm afternoon. Stepping out the door, yes, you're going to need a light jacket. We'll have clouds from Irma moving in late. So today, some early day sunshine, followed by late day increasing clouds. Mid to upper 70s, it so will be comfortably warm across the area today. You'll notice more humidity starting on Tuesday. Even some showers from Irma. Its impacts felt Wednesday, Thursday, maybe even Friday of this week. High temperature close to 80 degrees on Thursday. But at least our weekend right now, not looking too bad in the 80s. And George, you and I were talking about it after it hit the keys yesterday. It really, and look at this graphic, started going north. And that hardest hit area would have been right there in the Everglades. That was the northeast quadrant. So no one lives there. That was a real blessing. And then as it weakened, even lesser winds on the backside, meaning less storm surge in a lot of those western beaches. And Ginger, just have to say, your coverage of this has been oh, incredible. Spot on. Calm, you guys accurate, made it. absolutely tireless. And well thanks done. Thanks to my team, everybody out there, too, in the, in the field. Thanks so much. Yeah. We're going to be live all morning. We're going to track Irma as it makes its way north. A storm chaser giving us a firsthand look inside the deadly hurricane. And thousands of American tourists still trapped in the Caribbean. They are trying to escape. We're with the Coast Guard in some of the most devastated areas right here on GMA.
Getting your flu shot at Walgreens is easier than ever. Just walk right in and pay zero dollars with most insurance. Plus, when you get a flu shot at Walgreens, you help provide a life-saving vaccine to a child in need 